on today's Tech Help for Churches, Website Backgrounds. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. I, of course, am your host, Paul Allen Clifford. Uh, hold on just a second. Apparently, I don't have that set up correctly. Okay, let's try it this way. And if you would like to join the conversation, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. Or just head on over to Twitter and you can see my Twitter handle, Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F. That's, of course, if you are on YouTube watching this or on my website, trinitydigitalmedia.com. Either way, if you're listening to the audio podcast, welcome. I really enjoy speaking to you each and every week. Well, as I'm recording this, it's Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, the day before the day before Christmas. So um, I'm hoping that I will have some shows scheduled and going out even when I'm not near an internet connection, which I won't be for Christmas Day for sure, um, because my mother lives in the dark ages, you know, the mid-1990s. So as a result, there's uh, I won't have any live shows uh, and tomorrow we're um, I'm the video guy for my church's satellite campus in Frankfort Kentucky so I'll be heading up that effort uh, and I think I need to be there at one it's an hour away I can maybe do a live show tomorrow we'll see if I do it live or if I do it pre-recorded but either way uh, you can expect to see those. Tomorrow I'll be talking about uh, some quick last-minute ideas to bring more creativity to your church service uh, on Christmas Day. I, I wrote down something. I just can't decipher what I was thinking, so I've got to figure out exactly what I was thinking. And on Thursday the 26th, making smaller video files. So, before we get started anymore, don't forget that you can head on over to churchstreaming.tv um, actually, go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash church streaming to start your one-month trial with my streaming provider, churchstreaming.tv. They are a phenomenal service that allows you to stream to not only computers, not only iOS devices, but also Android devices. So all those audiences are covered, as well as a Roku channel like my Roku channel so if you'll go into the if you have a Roku and you go into the new section you can pop that up and you can see my smiling face <laughs> that probably scared some people sorry uh, you can see my smiling face on your big screen TV each and every day so that's just something else that you can do to engage with the content and all that is provided as a result of churchstreaming.tv so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash church streaming for your trial and to see if they're right for you one of the things that i love about them is flat rate pricing so you're not surprised at the end of the month it's based on the size of your church not Oh, this month we had two people watch, and next month we had 10,000. Uh-oh. Not that that would happen, but if it did, you wouldn't be surprised by pricing. Also, this show is brought to you by my pastor's book, What Life Are You Waiting For? by Pete Heiss. 
This is a wonderful book, something that you really ought to check out. Uh, it's available for pre-order on Amazon, CBD, and a bunch of other retailers. But just to make it simple, I've made a short link for you, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash whatlifebook. Now, I was there when uh, my pastor preached the sermon series that would become this book, and I've heard a sample chapter, and it's just phenomenal. It's all about seizing the opportunities that God has given us, and I can't recommend it even any more highly than I already have. I mean, it's not possible for me to like this book anymore. It's it's so incredible. So I just realized that the previous two things I said could sound negative. So let me say it as clearly as possible. Go get this book. You won't regret it. It'll be just a catalyst for change in your life. So let's head on into the topic for today. Website backgrounds. Now, one of the big mistakes that I see in websites that people design themselves is they find a representative picture and they put it up there and maybe it fits perfectly on their website as they're looking at it on their computer. Maybe they're using Webs, uh, Weebly, uh, or one of those other drag and drop web services. Uh, sorry, I'm shuddering every time I'm thinking about them because they're not good. But maybe they're using one of those and it looks good on their computer, so they say, great, this fits perfectly, golden. Well, the problem is that websites scale to fit your display. So, if you're not careful, if you don't have a well-created website, the background will start repeating, or it won't. And there's a couple of different things going on there. And either way, if you haven't planned for those contingencies, they're going to look bad. So if you haven't planned for it to repeat, and it does, it's going to look like the tiled background on Windows 95, where you had the main picture, and then there's like a border of repeating parts all around it that, in fact don't help you whatsoever. They're just like part of the picture and they're kind of annoying. If the background image isn't set to repeat, all of a sudden there's a hard edge where it goes to black, white, gray, who knows. But depending on how you do it, you it could be the case that you're obscuring all the background. It could be the case that you have this white border around this picture and it looks like a Polaroid picture from the 1970s. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. So let me start with my first recommendation and that is do not use a single photograph as your background. Now if you wanted to create a tiled background, a background that's meant to repeat over and over again, that's something totally different. I don't know necessarily about the design aesthetic of doing such a thing because you would have to do it right, but you need to plan for it to repeat or plan for the transition between the main background and the rest of the website background. Now, a way around this is instead of using a photograph to use tiles. Now there are background images that are specifically designed to repeat both vertically and horizontally and those website tiles, usually they're fairly small, they will enable you to see uh, just what's, well not see, but when they repeat, they don't look like they're necessarily repeating or they look like they're meant to repeat. I remember uh, there was a, probably Windows 98, there was a kind of optical illusion where it was 
a light colored bird and a dark colored bird and when they mesh together they form this kind of interesting repeating pattern well that's kind of the thing that i'm imagining now when you looked at the picture by itself it didn't look like much because part of each of the bird had birds had to be kind of outside of the frame for it to re repeat properly but if it's designed well and you've got some good artistic choices behind it you can absolutely use a tiled background and have it look fairly good um, you probably wouldn't want it to look like bathroom tile necessarily unless you are talking about something like the kitchen or something like the bathroom um, I have a friend I've met online and he calls himself the video chef so in his case he could use kitchen tile kind of as a metaphor as the video chef for doing for his website and that would be fine but you wouldn't necessarily want to use something that looks like bathroom tile or kitchen tile on your church website so you have to make good design decisions the simplest background for your website is probably a solid color now again you have to make good design decisions because make sure that the text is a contrasting enough background color uh, contrasting enough color from the background rather that it is legible so i've seen people that will put like yellow text on a white background can't hardly read it at all that's not a good choice so black text on a white background is a great choice uh, white text on a light blue background bad choice white text on a black background much more readable now that's the that's the only kind of idea behind what I'm suggesting here is readability now I have read some sites that say oh never ever ever do a dark background website but then I think wait your eye is attracted to light so why wouldn't you use a darker background with lighter text to kind of attract the eye towards what you want to see so I don't know if I agree that you should never ever ever use a black background but you should have a reason why you're using a back black background and to save energy is not a good reason a few years ago there was a version of Google called Blackle I believe it's still available let me head on over to that website uh, it was B-L-A-C-K-L-E dot com I believe and the premise behind it was they would take the Google search engine. Yes, they're still lying about it, too. My gosh. <clears throat> they're saying that it saves energy. It doesn't, especially on LCD monitors. So most of us are computing on LCD monitors these days. And, man, it's such a lie. Ugh. An LCD monitor makes black by making the LCD color as dark as it can, but the backlight doesn't turn off necessarily. Now, if it's an LED LCD, maybe it does, but generally speaking, it doesn't. So, you're not really saving any energy. So, don't think that by making a black background you're saving energy now if everyone was still using CRTs maybe you could make that argument but most people aren't if everyone was using plasma screens maybe you could make that argument but most people aren't so since we're all using LCDs or something similar to that energy savings is not a good reason to make this design design decision a good reason to make the design decision is you want to put something forward 
okay? You want to elicit an emotion. You want to say something to your audience. So choose an appropriate color. Make sure that it has a contrasting, readable font color to go with it and go from there. Now you can stop there. That, that could just be a fine background. Now a lot of people will think that it's boring. And I think I would say that your background does not make or break how your website looks. It's the content, it's the rest of the design that makes or breaks it. But you can definitely make it look worse. So if you start out with a good website design and then you add a repeating image like I talked about before, that is not going to make your website look better. It's going to make it look worse. So with all those things in mind, there is something that you can do to add some subtlety to your design. You could have an image, and when I say image, I mean something created in Photoshop or something like that, that is not designed to repeat, that goes in front of a solid color background, that starts with whatever you want it to be and has a created transition into the background color. Now keep in mind that some people are still computing on 800 by 600 displays. There are fewer and fewer every day, but they exist. 1024 by 768 is probably the smallest display size you're going to see but they, those smaller display sizes exist um, other than mobile phones and tablets. For computers, those smaller display sizes do in fact exist, so keep that in mind as you're designing. But you might notice that some websites, it looks like they have a beautiful image that starts at the top and ends at the bottom, and Sure, a lot of it's a solid color, but it, it's all beautiful and meshes together wonderfully. That's not actually what's going on. What's going on is the web designer has created an image, a small image, that goes towards the top and to the left, or towards the top and centered, and then they have created a transition point where it transitions into that background color. So a good way to do this is just from a simple perspective. If you wanted to start out with, let's say, light gray and do a gradient down to a darker gray, and then the darker gray was the background, that's what you would use, and you would have a small amount of gradient, and then you would know exactly what that darker gray is on the bottom of the gradient, and that would be your background color. So there are a lot of things that you can do to make the design look better. Uh, when I was designing a website for a local church, um, local Baptist church that's pastored by a friend of mine that I went to college with, I purposely designed the background so that if it repeated horizontally as wide as a retina screen uh, for the retina MacBook Pro, which was just brand new and just out, it would look fine. Or if it went all the way, it's a responsive design, so if it went all the way down to an iPhone 3GS, which was not a retina screen, it's what I had up until last week, actually, because I'm cheap. Uh, if it went down to that small of a screen, either way it would look fine. And that's what you want in a web design is you want it to look fine on the smallest device it'll be looked at on and the largest device it'll be looked at on so that people can see it either way and that it looks good either way and everything in between and so that is my lesson for today on creating your website to look a little bit better is pick a good background. 
if you have a bad background, but the rest of this design looks great, I said it just a little earlier, but it cheapens the design. It makes it look not good. Also look for problems of conjunction where boxes inside the website cover up important things on the website itself. Uh, a really good way to test this, by the way, is when you have your web browser window open and you're on this website that you're looking at, well, take the little cursor, move it over to one side and make the website, make the web browser window more narrow and see what that does to the, what that does to the design. Also, take the web uh, site window and move it about 50% off of the display and expand it in the other direction to make the window wider than you would normally see and see how that affects the design. And I think that you'll see that there may be some problems that you need to address. But it's better that you find out the problems and deal with them than that someone who is going to visit your church decides, oh, at least they have a website, but I don't know, the design's so bad. Now, of course, they're probably not going to consciously make that decision and say, oh, the design is bad, so therefore I can't go to this church. Not consciously. But if there's something else that, while not a deal breaker, they found a little a little bit outside what they wanted to do with your church website, maybe something about a picture of the children's room or something. Just they noticed it and they didn't think much of it, but they also noticed that your church's design on your website wasn't very good. They will subconsciously think, well, they haven't put a lot of effort into this, so maybe they won't put a lot of effort into taking care of my kids. Again, they're not thinking this overtly, but it's these subconscious things that we want to avoid. We want to avoid distraction as much as possible in the service. Well, we also want to avoid distraction as much as possible in the website because I'm 40 years old and people my age and younger are all checking out your church's website before they visit. They are. So if you think, oh, no one cares all that much about our website. I mean, sure, the calendar hasn't been updated in five years, but who cares? People care. And it's stopping people from visiting your church. It just is. So keep that in mind as you're using your website and the internet to go out and change eternity. Till next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.